close and I want to yield to the ranking member, Ms. Lee, for her closing remarks. Ms. Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, I just want to seek unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, this statement by the National Center for Transgender Equity, excuse me, equality. A recurring theme. It's ordered. Thank you. A recurring theme from my Republican colleagues and their witnesses is that trans girls are more likely to injure other players during sports. I'd like to read a statement by a trans female high school rugby player, and I quote, at five foot seven and approximately 140 pounds, I routinely go up against other women from five foot three, 100 pound players who are quick and agile, to six feet tall, 250 pound women who are nearly double my size. She continued, and I quote, and during a scrimmage a few weeks later, I had my arm broken in a collision with a cisgender player. While unfortunately, I can't help but chuckle because my experience is the opposite of narratives playing on unfounded fears that cisgender women face a higher risk of injury from transgender women on the field. My colleagues are grasping at straws for arguments to support their transphobic and dangerous stereotypical views of women's bodies. I think this hearing has shown how vital immediate action is to protect our transgender young people. On April 6, 2023, the Department of Education announced a proposed revision to Title IX regulations on students' eligibility for athletic teams. The administration's proposed revision to Title IX would prevent institutions that receive federal funding from applying blanket sex-related criteria that would limit or deny a student's ability to participate on a male or female team consistent with their gender identity. This proposed revision must be finalized. We've seen how without these protections, Title IX can be weaponized against transgender students. During her time running the Department of Education, Secretary DeVos repeatedly leveraged Title IX's prohibition of sex discrimination to roll back protections for transgender student athletes. For example, in May 2020, the Department of Education prevented a Connecticut high school from maintaining its policy allowing transgender students to participate in athletics on a team corresponding to their gender identity. In another case, from 2020, Secretary DeVos's department successfully forced Franklin Pierce University to rescind its transgender participation and inclusion policy despite the policy's compliance with the NCAA guidance for transgender athletes. We need our Department of Education to be able to stand up and defend our transgender students because they, like all willing young people, deserve to participate in sports. Transgender youth participant, participate in sports for the same reasons as everyone else, to build and nurture friendships, increase self-esteem, and develop crucial skills like teamwork and discipline. Equal access to school programs go hand in hand with academic excellence. The Trevor Project found that transgender and non-binary athletes had significantly higher grades than their transgender and non-binary peers who do not participate in sports. You do not have to be an expert on what it means to be transgender to understand that singling out a small group of youth who simply want to participate with their peers is not how we as elected officials should be spending our time. These youth already face stigma and bullying, and these attacks only exacerbate those challenges. Youth sports should be open to all, and policing the bodies or appearances of our youth hurts everyone. The anti-trans sports bills being signed into law across the country seek to create a problem that just doesn't exist, all for the sake of perpetuating hate against vulnerable groups. This isn't about preserving competition in sports. It's a way to mobilize would-be voters by turning trans rights into a political football. I encourage the Department of Education to prioritize finalizing this proposed revision to protect our transgender youth. And I encourage my Republican colleagues to stop picking on kids. I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Lee.